What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we're going to start a little bit of a video series here. Don't know how many videos, but it's going to be multiple because there's just so many Transcendence Heroes to cover. Uh, most recently, I know we've had a lot of people asking for this, Andy being one of like the most recent ones. Yes, I read all the comments, guys. Uh, but they want to know a Transcendence Explained video or series. I was going to do one video, but man, I feel like that would be a little too much. So we're probably going to break it up into a few, talking about why certain transcendence heroes are picked and what their main uses are and of course we're going to start this one with sword flash we've been using her a lot lately uh and most importantly she's kind of the most important transcendence hero overall she's going to give you the best progress with the least amount of effort most of the time so we're going to start off there and we're going to talk about the original when she came out why she's so strong and how she stayed so relevant in the meta so make sure you guys take one second hit that subscribe button let's jump right into it So yes, we have a ton of Transcendence heroes lining up. They seem to be pretty much the only important heroes in the game nowadays. So planning ahead and making sure you can build the correct ones is a hot topic among a lot of players. And I think we've had what? just over two years of transcendence heroes i think it was around august ish when sword flash came out in 2020 uh she started out as probably one of the most powerful heroes in the game and somehow has managed to continue to stay the most powerful transcendence hero in the game we're about to come to our 12th hero meaning we have two of every faction what they're going to do after that we don't know but in the meantime we need to talk about why she is so strong well really the biggest synergy comes down to the strongest supporter in the game i would say arguably and that is drake they are both assassins and drake has this really cool interesting ability called defense down it's a skill effect meaning it can't be removed reduces the target's armor damage reduction all damage reduction block and dodge by 100 percent uh that's cool but what makes it the most important is it, he inflicts it on the enemy with the lowest hp well when we come over to our most powerful hero here every one of her attacks attacks the target with the lowest hp so already there we had drake come out what was it just was it was it that year or was it the year before i can't remember drake has been out we've had other heroes like rogan and stuff that have synergies with assassins and it just so happened that the first transcendence hero was assassin meaning targeting the lowest hp target is very easy for these assassins both with the active ability and the basic attack now she does have of course like armor ignoring damage but that doesn't i mean that they're still blocked they're still dodged there's still all damage reduction damage reduction there's tons of those in the different game modes uh but that is one of the things that made her the most powerful when it came to pve game modes uh, beyond that though she gets layers of sharpness which was one of the most powerful and still is one of the most powerful defensive mechanics in the game uh, having a 100% chance to dodge an active skill or basic attack now the only way to get around an ability like this is if you have an upgraded star spawn namely uh, I think it's the ranger one here right yeah you have dodge offset so 12% chance to hit that target. I mean, you guys can see when we do our Aspen Dungeon runs, there's reasons why our Fairy Queen Vesta can hit the Sword Flash once in a while. It's because of the Spirit of Freedom. And that's why she has long reigned as one of the strongest PvP heroes in the game on top of everything else. Now, when you take into consideration her tree as well, her core is okay. It gives, you know, some minor buffs to allies and stuff like that. But there's a couple things with her tree of origin that are extremely, extremely strong. Of course, number one, it's going to increase her stats and it's going to give her stronger attacks. But there's specific ones here that launch extra attacks after the third. So she doesn't do just three attacks now. She does four attacks. Now, the last one is typically the strongest one. Now it's a little bit lower, but it is a bonus attack. The other thing, too, is... Uh, 
Certain tree branches here too have a 20% chance to enhance glowing blade without consuming impeccable flow. So you keep those impeccable flow stacks for multiple rounds. And then there's other things like gaining a ton of extra energy as well as every dodger block increasing attack and defense. Uh, you have 25% chance to get an extra layer of sharpness, which as we just talked about here is her chance to dodge. So there's really cool synergies in her abilities. And the fact that you can pair her with Drake, um, just makes her hands down one of the best and still the best in my opinion transcendence hero there's been some other contenders depending on the game modes but really there's nowhere that she doesn't compete the best when we're talking about aspen dungeon uh purgatory we always kind of highlight fairy queen vesa but she is the best hero essentially to run this in especially if you max out all her sublimations she just goes bonkers off the charts uh other game modes though one of the most important, the main reason why people pick her as the first Transcendence Hero, sometimes they pick Fairy Queen Vest if they invested heavily in an Eloise, but if you didn't invest heavily in Eloise, Swordfish Flash is your pick. Uh, she has the easiest clears to get all the way through the difficulties in Vortex. Pair her with a Sword Flash or a Sword Flash with a Starwing Jara, some Ignis heroes for you know energy generation and things like that when they die with drake combination targeting the lowest hp target it can go crazy pretty pretty fast you can kill like a target in the first round the drake target instantly with the sword flash she just does amazing amazing damage realms gate i mean realms gate is kind of like a pvp game mode anyway in my opinion the way your teams are matched up and everything at least it feels that way uh again a very good hero that you can use there and then void arc is another one that she's amazing against the void arc bosses the ones floating around i don't think we actually have any up right now though let's see if i can actually zoom out here we go on blue stacks uh no we've already killed off the the uh whatchamacallit void arc exploration boss so can't do that but she is one of the best there i mean every single game mode you check off arena she's still one of the strongest pvp heroes in the game uh tower of dream is a new one where she still has a lot of use because you can still use drake things like that the only place that she feels like she drops off even a little bit is in the void campaign because of course in the void campaign when you go to battle the only heroes you can use are transcendence heroes and you do lose out on that big big bonus of drake because drake just you know like i was talking about the defense down synergy is there uh she does lose value like i said when it comes to void campaign but every other game mode there is she just absolutely dominates it even in sea land i've seen uh sea land 30 clear with sword flash granted i think it was an a minus copy with giant killer i don't know if i've seen any with b i'm sure someone's got sea land 30 done with a b sword flash you typically need more investment in support heroes and such but not as much it's, it's still pretty good uh it's just the fortress faction is a really good one for heroes to help support between sherlock fiona uh even holmes young and stuff like that really good supporters built around her and she can get a ton of stuff cleared out so if you're wondering who your first transcendence hero should be it probably should be sword flash like i said the only kind of niche is if you are building an eloise as one of your first heroes fairy queen vesta is usually the best with your eloise being your main householder typically if you are going the route of a sword flash that means you are going to need uh starwing jara as well with an energy feed setup you're going to want like you know demon bells rui scepters things like that and you're also going to most likely want a scarlet queen halor because again she's one of the best supporters in the game with her all damage dealt increasing by 15 percent for all allies that is a significant boost um but yeah artifacts wise there's a couple different ways you can build her you can go for uh, an upgraded antlers cane which is better for the longer fights longer battles pve game modes things like that if you're talking about probably more like aspen dungeon things like that you can't really go wrong with the melodic strings you can't go wrong really with a punisher of immortal either both of them are very very strong and synergize very well with her abilities punisher giving like an additional layer of damage uh on top of her already multiple layers of damage very good ways to build her 
Uh, and again, if you go for like a Punisher route, I typically like running like a crit attack attack stone. So you're like all in on that crit chance there. Uh, you can also go all in on the crit chance over here as well. I guess <laughs> they put some random ones here when you're taking a look at the hero. But uh, very, very strong hero. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. We're Next time we're going to jump to a, something a little different. We're going to talk about like the following three heroes. Queen, Asmodel, and Jara. Probably all together. But... Uh, but we're going to break these down a few at a time to kind of talk about their uses. It's just this one. She is the best hero in the game. Like, just hands down. She is. It's been two and a half years. She's still the best transcendence hero. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you've built her, what struggles you've had, how successful you've been with her. Leave a comment down below. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. I'll see you guys in episode two.